Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about we discussed about root locus for these two two things for s equal zero and minus four. So why doing this root locus? We will get the root locus for s equal zero s equal minus four is these two are in real axis. That's why it has the breakaway point. This is the breakaway point minus three point zero nine, and it will follow these two asymptotes. This asymptote and this asymptote. In this session, we will discuss root locus for the these two minus one j plus one minus one j minus one. Okay, the remaining are the remaining poles are complex conjugate poles. Those are minus one plus j one and minus one minus j one. These are the two poles. So for this, whenever these two poles available, so We, it is only poles. We need to find of angle of departure. Angle of departure. That is represents with the phi d. What is the formula for phi d? So angle of we have two po two things minus one plus j one one thing minus one minus j one. So we should find of the angle of departure. So first we should find phi d for minus one. Plus j1 pole minus 1 plus j1 pole. So in order to find out this, just simply redraw the to understand this. Simply redraw the given poles, given S plane. So in this we have in this we have one pole S equal to zero, and up to this we have yeah. We have two poles. One is minus one plus j one, and second pole is minus one minus j one. Two poles are completed, and one, two, three, four. At minus four, we have the other pole. Minus four, we have the other pole. Okay, this is the thing we know that. This is the thing we know that. What is phi d? Phi angle of departure for minus one plus j one pole. We need to find out for this. So in order to find out this, what is the formula? Phi d equal to 180 minus summation of angle per pole minus angle of zeros. That means minus one plus j one pole angle with this pole, angle with this pole, angle with this pole. If the zeros are available, then angle with zeros. We need to find out first summation of poles. We need to find out summation of poles. We need to find out. So just I will consider to understand this. I will change this. So what is the angle between these two points? I will take it as a theta one, and we need to find out the. And we need to find out the angle between these two points. Let's take it as theta two. And again, we need to find out the angle between these two points. So this should be theta three. Okay, this should be theta three. So first, we need to find out. Just you look at here. This theta one. Okay. This pole, this angle is minus one plus j one. This is forty five. Approximately theta one is one thirty five. Previously we did this theta one. Okay, for zero angle, one thirty five. So directly I will take angle of theta one is the one thirty five. And we need to find out this angle of theta two. We need to find out this angle of theta two. So we need to find out the theta two means. This is the one, and between these two points we have three. Okay, and this is magnitude is one. And for theta two, in order to find out the theta two, just apply the tan for this. Apply the tan. What is tan theta two? Tan theta two is equal to opposite by adjacent side. For theta two, opposite is one, adjacent is three. So this is one by three. From this, theta two equal tan inverse of one by three. 
by solving this we will get theta 2 equal 18.43 18.43 okay so this is the theta 1 is completed theta 2 what is theta 3 theta 3 is between minus 1 j plus 1 minus 1 j minus 1 this is the theta 3 actually between these two poles the angle is directly looking at this theta 3 is 19 theta 3 is 90 degrees theta 3 is 90 so finally we will find out angle of departure phi d equal 180 minus summation of poles or whatever summation of zero we don't have any zeros directly this is the zero so from this theta 1 equal 135 and theta 2 equal 18.43 and theta equal 90 theta 2 equal to 90 okay so by doing this we will get angle of departure is angle of departure phi d is directly we will get by doing this 180 minus all these things we will get the value is minus 63.43 is the angle 63 is the angle for for what for minus 1 plus j1 so for minus 1 plus j1 we will get the minus 63.43 is the angle same if we are finding for angle of departure for minus 1 minus j1 angle so both are quite opposites that's why we have plus 63.43 plus 63.43 okay so this is two angles we are already find out 63.43 and minus 63.43 so we will locate these these are in the given diagram so so we have one thing is there it has some 63.43 so for that purpose i will change the color so look at here maybe this i will take this is the 63.43 but minus and it will it will follow like this and it will follow like this yes and it will be zero k is zero gain is zero at pole and this will be go in this direction and it will touch at the imaginary axis and it will flow it will flow it will reach the infinite zero and at this infinite zero the gain will be the infinite and next here also we have minus 63 here also we have the minus 63 so this minus 63.43 is the angle here so maybe this may be angle 63.43 and it has the angle of and it has the angle like this and it will reach at starting it is the gain is k in k is 0 and it will reach the gain k is infinite okay and we will find out this point also intersection of imaginary axis so how we will find out the intersection of imaginary axis so we will solve this by the intersection of imaginary axis so intersection of imaginary axis we can solve that is the same procedure what is the procedure first you write the characteristic equation that is 1 plus g of s into h of s is equals to 0 so by solving this directly you will get the equation that is s power 4 plus 6s cube plus 10s square plus 8s plus k is equals to 0 so by taking this form a Ruth Hurwitz criteria s square s power 1 s power 0 
okay from this directly I will use 1 6 10 8 K so by solving this we will get 52 by 8 and this is the K and by solving this we will get 70 minus 6k by 8.66 we will get and the k he is there so for what is the marginally stable condition so these you, you solve this you will get for marginally stable condition stable condition one row will be zero this s power one row will be zero that means I will take 70 minus 6k by 8.66 is equals to 0 from this I will solve 6k equal to 70 k value is 70 by 6 by solving this we will get 11.66 and we will form a by this we will form a equation this is 52 auxiliary equation that auxiliary equation equal to 52 by 8 s square plus k equal to 0 so 52 by 8 is directly we can write 8.66 s square plus k is equals to 0 you can substitute this k value and solve this directly you will get s value two things 1 s1 equal to plus j 1.15 second s2 equal to minus j 1.15 these two will be we will get these are the intersection points of root locus so this is this point is I will write minus j 1.15 and this point is plus j 1.15 okay so this is the procedure to do for the root locus for the given diagram from first you need to think First, you should look at the how many poles are available. So the how many next how many zeros are available. Whenever we have real, look at the angle of asymptotes. If there is no zeros are given. After that, so in order to take a particular point, just you find out the centroid. After that, whenever you are finding the centroid, if you have the real axis pose, then you need to find out the breakaway point. So that breakaway point you will get some value. Okay. After that, you will find if complex conjugate poles are available. First, you go for the angle of departure. This is the angle of departure procedure. And after that, if you point, if you want to find the uh, imaginary axis, intersection of imaginary axis, you have to use the Ruth Hurwitz criteria. So by using the all these points, you will get the you will solve any root locus. You will draw the any root locus for the given open loop transfer function okay so this is about the given problem but in order to do this it will take it will take the so much of time okay I hope all of you understand this session thank you